you got the photos into Lightroom, you've made them look good using Lightroom, now what the hell do we do with them? Let's get them out of Lightroom. I'm Michael Herb, this is Lightroom Basics, part three of three, the export module. Let's go over the general settings for the export. There's three different ways you can get to the export dialog box. Number one is the file menu. Number two is directly on the screen. And number three is your keyboard shortcut, command or control, shift plus E. We now have a bunch of settings. We're going to go through, set them up just generally. Your export location, this is where the photo is going to go. You can choose a folder after you hit the export button with this option. You can set to a specific folder if you always export to a certain folder. You can use this option or we're going to use this option when we set up a preset in the next section. Let's just do this for now. If you're using a specific folder you can always say Facebook, pictures, put in a subfolder. This will create a subfolder. You can add to this catalog which will re-add it into your existing Lightroom catalog that you're using. File naming. This is where you can set up custom file names. Uh, you know, image 2221 Michael Herb photo. Same as the import dialog. We can change it here with a preset. We can edit, create our own. You can add, insert a file name, insert a sequence number, Insert custom text. Done. You can always save this if you want so that it comes up in your presets. Done. If you're exporting video, you can resize it, which is great if you want to give a client SD files from HD footage. File settings. File settings, quick and easy. Flickr, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, 500px, upload JPEG, sRGB, and you can limit the file size or you can adjust the slider. I like to limit the file size, but that has a lot to do with the size of the file. For Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all the little file sharing sites, I'll set to 1200px uh, on the long side. And you can do long edge, you can give it dimensions, you can reduce, you can actually tell it how many megapixels you want to output to. I like the long edge to be what I set my pixels to. So 1200. Now if you're up exporting to the iPad Retina, it's 2048 pixels. Uh, if you're outputting towards, let's say that you're making desktop backgrounds, you just match the long edge to the long edge of the resolution. Resolution. It has nothing to do with the quality of the image on an the internet or on a screen. I could do one or I could do a million and you're not going to notice a difference in the file size or the image quality. That is instructions sent to the printer. You output one DPI and the printer is not going to print a very nice picture. You output 300 and you upload a decent size to the internet. Somebody could just click, drag, print, hang. Don't do that. Output sharpening. If you haven't already sharpened the shit out of your photos, you can say sharpen. Metadata. If you're one of those people that are super weird about letting people know how you did something, you can actually get rid of the metadata. You got a bunch of different. Copyright only, copyright and contact info. I mean, if you're really weird about letting people know, just at least give the copyright or copyright info. Or all metadata. Now, if you're uploading uh, images that you shot with an iPhone, or a Android phone or anything with GPS, a lot of times you don't want people knowing uh, where that photo was taken, um, especially you take pictures of kids. Let's say you took a picture of your son or daughter in their bedroom. Believe it or not, that location info is embedded in the file and somebody can actually bring that into a program and look at the GPS and get their GPS coordinates for your son's bedroom. <laughs> it's it's creepy, so just keep that in mind. 
We're gonna go over watermarking in the next section, but this is where you can apply a watermark and the post-processing. This is what you want it to do after it finishes. I typically want to show it in the finder just so that I know that it's there. It's kind of a visual representation of my, f of that it did what I wanted it to do. But you can have it open in Photoshop. You can have it do just about anything you want. All right, so we've got what we want. And I'm gonna hit export. And it's gonna ask me where I want to put it. I'm gonna say pictures. I'm going to say Lightroom Tutorial. I'm going to make a new folder, say Export. And there it is. Now I, I limited the file to 1200px and I didn't want it to go over 300k. I come in here and I notice that it's 257k and it's 1200px on the wide side by 800 which is perfect. If you right click, get info, you're going to notice that all the XF data is there, your keywords are there, and those keywords will upload to 500px and Flickr. Let's go in and learn how to make a watermark. We're gonna go back into our export dialog box. This time we're gonna take a different way. We're going to go to export and we're going to scroll down here to watermarking and we're going to go edit watermarks. All right, so right now I have my logo overlay. Let's make this bigger so we can see it. But how do I get that in there? Well, you have the ability to do text or a graphic. If you just wanted to do a real quick Michael Herb client raw preview, this is what I do for the clients. You can just enter that down here. If anybody wants to know how to do the copyright symbol, now this is kind of some people are like, well, how do you do that? Well, you hold down Alter Option G, and that'll give you your copyright symbol. And you have a bunch of different options, your opacity, size, fit, fill. You can inset it a little bit, move it. You can anchor it in different spots. You can rotate it, change the text, change the font. I don't need to go over that. Why? Because it's all right there. You can figure it out. If you wanted a graphic, hit graphic. You want a PNG or a JPEG. I, see, I recommend PNG because then you can have transparency. You save a PNG 24 out of Photoshop and then it'll save that transparency for you. And you just navigate to wherever you have it, Lightroom tutorial, we're gonna do Michael Herb photo shoes, and here we go. Now this is where you can affect the opacity. Again, you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller. I'm not a big fan of the people that do something like this. It absolutely drives me nuts, and I get that some people are weird about their photos, but let the person appreciate the photo for what it is. Don't, don't do that, I mean, it's just, it's like, oh, I took the photo. Yeah, well, I can see you took the photo. Is this an advertisement for your logo or is this an advertisement for the photo? Show me the photo. You know, discreet. I mean, if you're worried about people stealing your images, don't put them on the internet. <laughs> okay, so we found this. Okay, well, this is good. That's good. We like that. Perfect. Now, up here. Save current setting as new preset. That's perfect, or you can update what you already have. If you wanted to change it, go back and hit update. All right, but we're happy, good. Now, when you hit watermarking, you can have a Michael Herb logo, show in Finder, awesome. Now we're gonna upload, go to export. It's gonna ask me if I wanna overwrite this. Now it'll say, Override, skip, cancel, or you use unique names. Well, I'm gonna say use unique name, and it's just going to dash two. Now, without the watermark, with the watermark. Perfect. You got a batch of photos that you're exporting. Do you always export a certain way? Let's create a preset so that you don't have to do it more than one time. All right, we're gonna take a photo. We're gonna 
go into our export dialog and we're going to set something up okay let's say that you're um, exporting to your Facebook page every week same thing all right we're going to go here we're going to say a specific folder and we are going to go here and choose a folder Lightroom tutorial that's fine we're going to go Facebook sweet all right we're going to choose now we're going to say we're going to make a custom name we want uh, no file name we want a sequence number and this is where you could put let, let's say that you're exporting a wedding put the per people's name all right so we do that great okay so we have that that okay so we want them all at 300 we love the 1200 px uh, we want to remove the location information uh, we want the logo and we want to show in the finder all right great this is exactly what we want but we don't want to have to input these settings all the time it's as easy as coming over here to the presets adding a preset naming it in user presets and hit create now let's say that we wanted to export all the photos we select everyone that we want we can come down here and hit export Facebook 2 hit export all right we need to export the photos showed them in the finder we have one two three four five six I mean they're there all there in sequential order now let's try this again we don't want to make any extra clicks we don't want it to go to export and then export all right well we select the photos that we want we right click we come down to export using Facebook too. Let's just overwrite. Gonna export the photos, automatically show me, and there they are. Let's go ahead and make another preset. We're gonna come in and make a full res. Now, Lightroom has a preset already if you wanted to bold burn full res JPEGs, but let's change it up let's say we want a specific folder we're gonna come in here I'm gonna go up one we're say full res come here okay full res we want full res JPEGs but we do not want to limit the file size and we want our quality at 100 we do not want to resize the photos and we want to be able to print them so let's say 300 we don't want to ex any extra sharpening we can include all the metadata that's fine uh, we want the watermarks that's fine okay show in finder great okay but well we want to add full res fine. hit ok all right we're gonna hit add preset and we're gonna hit OK now we'll come in here we want to hit that right click export we'll say full res automatically does its thing puts it up there exports the full res with the logo you're done and that concludes tutorial 3 of 3 of the Lightroom basics I really hope that you got a lot out of this in tutorial 1 you learned how to import and learn how to get around Lightroom. In tutorial number two, over that entire hour, you learn how to make your photos look good in the develop module. You now know how to get those beautiful photos out of Lightroom so that you can put them on the internet for the world to see. If I've missed anything, or if you need something explained a little bit more, leave a comment. I try to answer them all in a timely manner. If you want to stay up to date, and you want to get tutorials a little bit early because I tend to upload them a little early and put them on unlisted you can find me on Facebook at Michael Herb Photo this is where you'll get early updates you'll get sneak peeks uh, and generally I just like to interact with people because I, I like talking if that's not obvious alright if you liked the video hit like 
share the video, let people know. Subscribe if you want to keep seeing more. I'm going to keep trying to make more tutorials because it's something that I enjoy to do and it actually uses my college degree, which is, you know, <laughs> digital media. Um, thanks for watching. I'm Michael Herb.